Friends, peace be with you. Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Covenant on this beautiful, cool, but sunshine-filled day. May we all experience the shining illumination of God's presence within us, within this community, within the world. It is our practice throughout Lent to remind ourselves of God's presence in the world. In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the questions, we honor whatever you bring into this space today. Your body, your thoughts, your worries, your hopes, your fears, your uh, potentials. And in this space, as was our practice last Lent, we remember that each of our bodies have a special housing for the Holy Spirit. So it is a temple of the Holy Spirit. We welcome the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is already there, but we welcome and acknowledge the Spirit's presence. So I would invite you to check in with your body and take a breath in and out with me. You can do it at your own pace. Maybe take two breaths in and out, inhale and exhale, and whatever pace is right for your body to check in and experience God's grace and love here and now. And again, peace be with you. Maybe move those fingers a little bit, those toes, to check in with the body. The body is essential for how we understand and experience God. So friends, again, be most welcome. In multiple sacred spaces this day, we are gathered. We are gathered online in multiple places, and we honor that and welcome you, however you are gathering this day. Uh, whatever cup of coffee is by your side or tea or water here in this space at 67 Newbury Street, we welcome you too. Uh, I won't tell the building committee, but you're probably okay with a cup of coffee, but um, don't, let them, don't let them hear that. I hope it was not recorded, but you are most welcome in this space as well. We are gathered in these spaces, and we give thanks to God for those who help make that possible. A few announcements for the life of the community. Today is a very special service. We call it our Celebration of the Word service. It's inspired by our siblings in faith in Nicaragua, in a community known as the sweet name of Jesus, Dulce Nombre de Jesus. And so we are grateful, and we invite their solidarity and presence uh, this day as we worship. You'll hear a lot more about this hermano miento, this partnership, uh, as we worship today. Uh, and we do this uh, on multiple occasions uh, in our life of faith, uh, and we definitely uh, learn so much from this relationship and this solidarity. So we're grateful, especially today, for our Nika companions. This is our group within the larger body uh, that we call Church of the Covenant that helps accompany this relationship, that helps manifest this relationship, that has m regular meetings, monthly if not more, uh, multiple messaging back and forth between Boston, Greater Boston, and Nicaragua on WhatsApp and on email and in phone calls and letters. So we give thanks to God for our Nika companions who will lead this service today uh, along with Tom Handel, our Minister of Music. Friends, a few other announcements. It is the Lenten season. Our theme for Lent is Grotto, Reside and Resist. It's an excellent time for us to reside and resist together and lean into both of those themes. If you want to know more about our Lenten theme, there's an old school brochure on paper right? Paper. You have paper. You have a bulletin that's on paper, too. That's in the back, too. For those gathering and worshiping online, you have the digital copies that will be available. There's a bulletin in the chat, and also online you can find this uh, brochure on our Lenten page. Lots of opportunities and invitations for us in that. I want to remind us that we are invited to build our own grottos this year. Has anyone started that process? Yes, found a shoebox, found a matchbox, found a sacred corner in your home or, or in a sacred outdoor space. That's a place where we are inviting you to, to bring the Spirit's promptings to that space and maybe cut out a picture or, or write a, a verse that, that you're inspired by or a piece of music that moves you or a conversation here in this space or online that you take from the wider community and put those memories in that space so that throughout these 40 days you can go to that space and be reminded of the things that God is teaching and revealing for us uh, during this sacred season. Ukraine is on our heart and our minds every single day, and there are direct ways that we can respond and act. Uh, in your bulletin, there are links through both our denominational leads and World Central Kitchen that we lifted up last week, uh, places where you can uh, lean in and support in addition to your heart solidarity and prayers. And we hold the people of Ukraine, the people of Russia, also in our hearts this day as we gather. 
in all places where there is war and injustice. You will see other important announcements. The last one I want to lift up is our prelude often begins a little bit before 1030. So come early to worship uh, in, the, in person or online to catch the full uh, extent of our ministry uh, each morning. Are there other important announcements that I have unintentionally left out this morning? Then friends, I would invite you to rise on your feet or in your hearts now, wherever you are, and call yourself into worship as is listed, as is printed in our bulletin in what we call our call to worship. As we continue in this sojourn called Lent, as people on a journey, may we follow the Spirit's mystical summons. As we imagine, create, and reside in the grottos God has for us, May all that is dear to us find shelter under God's all-encompassing, loving wing. And as Christ leads us to emerge into action, may we find new strength to resist and persist. In this season and in our lives, in this hour, may we worship in joyful gratitude. Friends, every time we gather in spaces, we remind ourselves of that mystical but sure presence of God by lighting a candle. If you have a candle to kindle in your home space now, we invite you to do so as long as you can safely remember to blow that out. If not, you remember in your mind's eye what a candle looks like, what it feels like, and the illumination it brings. We celebrate this mystery as the mystery of the presence of Christ among us. So friends, the light of Christ, thanks be to God. Our opening hymn, we invite you to sing together with us, Over My Head, Arriba de, de Mi, as, as is printed. We will sing in English the first verse, in Spanish the second verse, and verse three again in English. I believe that is the, the flow, right? Yes, <laughs> that is the flow. Let us sing. in God's grace. We welcome Byron. Please join me in the prayer for grounding in God's grace. God, who is somewhere, God, who is here, we thank you for going, for the going the road with us. We thank you for the gift of community that spans from Nicaragua to Boston and beyond. We ask that our actions would bless you as together we seek the reign of God. Help us do your will in all places and always. Help us to struggle to obtain the bread of each day for everyone. Give us chance and help us to give others another chance. Help us to swim against the current and free us from the structures of the world that exclude. In solidarity, let us open ourselves to God now in silent prayer.
now we will hear the assurance of God's grace. You are the God of the poor, the human, and simple. You struggle the will turn side in town. You line up in the work camp to get your daily wage. Uh, you are the God with a weather beaten face. Being the, the selling lottery tickets without being embarrassed by that job. That is why we can talk with you. You are the worker, the worker Christ, and so we celebrate. And you, we are set free and made whole. Amen. Covenant has had a sister relationship with Dulce Nombre de Jesus in the northwest corner of Nicaragua since 1996. The relationship is based on friendship between communities and creates transformation both here and there. It is based on the premises of liberation theology that we can learn and grow aware of the world around us and we can act in solidarity and reconciliation even across differences. We have sent many delegations south and received some from the village up north. We, wrote, we write letters and communications online. The relationship is based on accepting people as they are and working together toward the reign of God. This morning, we'll read our scripture text two times. The first time we hear it in the spirit of Lectio Divina, Divina we invite you to listen for one specific word, phrase, or image that stands out to you. After the reading, we will then, without any elaboration or explanation, be invited to say out loud, popcorn style, the word, phrase, or image that came to you. For those online, please type the word into the chat, and Diane will lift these verbally after we hear those lifted in the congregation. The second time it is read, we will then share more. But for now, listen for a word that stands out to you. And people in the covenant in the church, if you will say the word loudly, I will repeat it. So give me a little bit of time to hear it and repeat it for people online. Thank you. The reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 33. God said to Moses, go leave this place, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, and go to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Sarah, Hagar, Isaac, Rebekah, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, saying, To your descendants I will give it. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. He called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought God would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise and stand each of them at the entrance of their tents, and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, the pillar of cloud, and God would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, 
All the people would rise and bow down, all of them at the entrance of the tents. Thus God used to speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Moses said to God, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. God said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses replied, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, and I and your people from every people on the face of the earth. God said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And God said, I'll make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Holy One. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, God said, you cannot see my face, for no one will sh shall see me and live. And the Holy One continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. To God. You are invited to share a word or image or phrase. I will give you rest. I know you by name. Goodness. Favor. Favor. Kay, did you have one? Presence with you. Presence with you. You are a cloud. You are. You are a pillar. You are a pillar of cloud. I will make all my goodness pass before you. the words shared in the chat here. Show me your ways, glory, as one speaks to a friend, face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Leave this place. You will see my back, see my face, outside the camp. Show me your glory. Keeping in mind the text that we've just heard and our Lenten theme of grotto, reside and resist, what is the Spirit saying to us about our world, our communities, our lives in light of this scripture? We'll be hearing the scripture read a second time. From Exodus 33. <clears throat> God said to Moses, 
go leave this place, you and the people whom have brought, you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, and go to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Sarah, Hagar, Isaac, Rebekah, jo Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, saying, To your descendants I will give it. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. He called it the tent of meeting, and everyone who sought God would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise and stand, each of them, at the entrance of their tents and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and God would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and bow down, all of them, at the entrance of the tents. Thus God used to speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. Moses said to God, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. God says, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses replied, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with me? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people from every people on the face of the earth. God said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Holy One. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, God said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Holy One continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand in the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of that rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. God is still speaking the word of God. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If you're so moved, please share your reflection of the scripture or covenant's theme, Lenten theme of Grotto, Reside and Resist, or both. After people in the sanctuary speak, we will listen to the people who, have, who are online. Tim will come around with the mic in the church. So I have to admit I've always struggled with this one because, you know, as Christians, you know, in the New Testament we hear so much about Jesus being right there, <laughs> Jesus speaking, and you see him, and you hear him, and this closeness. And I have to admit, in Lent, in these times of uncertainty, that's what I want. I want, like, to, that close relationship. So to hear God say, you can't see my face or you'll die, <laughs> or you can only see my back, or there's this pillar of cloud. I've always struggled with it because that's not the relationship. I, I know God, you know, dictates not me, but it's like I want that closer relationship, not this distant entity that I have to be so scared of. Uh, 
um, the line, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Um, it kind of reminds you like, you know, the struggles may never stop. We might never get refuge from that, but we can take peace in God's presence that he's always with us. reminded me of the people leaving the Ukraine. And it reminded me of the people leaving the Ukraine and leaving other places and wondering if God was also accompanying them. And it's one of our consciousnesses right now around immigration and the issue of these people emigrated from Egypt coming to a new land to be shown the new land and um, how will they be um, how will they survive in the new land It's interesting that when Moses keeps saying to God, please go with us, please go with us, God keeps replying, I will go with you. And we have to remember that, that God keeps saying, I will go with you, no matter where you're going. Now we'll hear from the people online. Rudy. Yeah, I'm also struck by uh, thinking about uh, refugees and especially also what what likely will happen right now, the refugees of, of war, but I'm also thinking about the climate refugees that we will encounter uh, many of people will be on the move to find places better places where they can survive and i'm thinking like how how god spoke to the people to say i take you to a land that i promised and i give it to you we we you know may think well if we have refugees coming to our place we still think of that is our place. Somebody comes in, it's our place. And maybe we are generous enough to make space, I hope. But but how can we even think about, well, maybe God sent them to us and give them this place. Meaning we just need to share. We need to not think it's our place that that we give people space in, but how can we even think of now this is our place. And that's what I'm thinking about, whether it is sharing your house with somebody rather than say, oh, somebody can come and stay with me versus we're going to live together and share our place. That Those are kind of the thoughts that came to my mind when I listened to this story. Gary. Um, I wrote into the uh, shared chat um, that the words, show me your ways, um, was something that resonated with me. And it really reflects my rather you know, sometimes unfortunate practical ways of viewing religion, which is that I look to the stories in the Bible as uh, good examples for how I should lead my life and uh, modeling um, my behaviors and my actions uh, on 
those stories. And uh, when asked by other people, you know, what is it that you get out of going to church? I frequently refer to the examples set by my fellow parishioners or ministers or the stories in the Bible on ways of influencing me in terms of the way I lead my life. I'll jump in and just say I'm really struck by the, the whole idea of the relationship between Moses and God and all the people watching the relationship between Moses and God. And just that, that sense of Moses saying, this whole community is in relationship. And that I'm struck by how you know, we're in relationship with Dulce and Renee Seuss as a, as a community, not just as individuals. And what, how, how do we form a sense of community and how as a community do we relate with God? And I feel like there's lots of potential for confusions and problems, but it's very intriguing that there was such a strong sense of connection and that God is definitely leading us and we will dedicate ourselves and trust that God is connected with us. So are there others um, online who'd like to speak? Wendy, if you can unmute and speak. Thanks so much, Diane. I just wanted to bring up a little point which is stuck in my mind was it he didn't even know the name of the people he was going to go with. He didn't distinguish. It was for everyone. Uh, yes, Memo. Uh, you have to unmute. If you can unmute your microphone and then speak. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, you know, I always call my attention that uh, Whatever God, you know, God is always sending people to go outside, to go, you know, to be alone. Like in this case, right, for Moses to set the tent out of, let's say, out of town, for example, you know. And, and it's, it's make, you know, it struck me, the fact that I like, or I feel that I'm always trying to be connected, surrounded, together, a company, you know. And God is saying, you know, okay, that, that, that's good, but go outside, go be by yourself to maybe to gain some mind, you know, clarity, you know, to put your thoughts together to, or, or, or in the sense of we are always surrounded. There's always, there's so many things going on around us, right? Always, all the time. And like, and it's like, God is saying like, go find a place where there's silence in the sense of, you know, disconnect for, for a little bit and, and rethink this or to, in order for you to reach whatever you are trying to, or, or, or disconnect so that I can show you, you know, also that you can hear clearly what I'm trying to tell you. So it, just, just thinking in the world today, you know, in my life, even of today, you know, like, but it's, you have to be connected to something 24 seven, how, how, how hard it is to make or take a little bit of time for that silence, you know, to be in silence, to, to, to hear what God is trying to say. So I think uh, it's something I need to practice more, you know, just to create silence or to go where is silence. Thank you, Mamo. Do 
return it to you in the sanctuary. Well, our last reflection was a wonderful transition because it's Memo who just spoke, who translated the reflections from Dulce Nombre. We will hear at the offertory a song from Nombre de Jesus, but we also have reflections from them. We sent them our scripture in advance for this service and asked them to reflect on the scripture and the Lenten theme of ours, grato, resist, reside and resist. And they have done that. And I want to share just a few of those <clears throat> summary of the reflection. But I also want to share the methodology that we have been learning when we've been able to reflect together as a community in Dulce Nombre. And this, this will give you a little sense of how it's a little different from the way we do it. It's a more of a community process and we're all being led, learning to um, practice of, of listening to each other and learning from each other. <clears throat> As a community, Dulce Nombre de Jesus, with Between Cultures facilitation, read the passage from Exodus 33, and the community recalled the different symbols from the biblical reading, especially the cloud, which meant that Yahweh was there accompanying his people. And that is why they prostrated, prostrated themselves when they saw the cloud, and also how Moses spoke face to face with God. Then, among everybody, they began constructing definitions of words that are not commonly used in their region. For the word grotto, it was said that it was somewhat similar to the caves where some saints had mystical experiences. For instance, St. Ignatius of Loyola in Manresa. The word reside was explained in relation to the word residence, a place where one lives. Then a game was used to form three groups in which each group reflected on the words grotto, reside, resist, and the biblical text was used for illumination. The question that served as a guide for the reflection was, what can we do once again to make these words a reality in our daily lives, especially in this season of Lent that is beginning? And I going to ask Kathy to read those, their group reflections. Their reflection on grotto. The grotto is something we have built within ourselves, and it is from there that our struggle begins, and we give space to others. It is our home, our family, and the community. It is a personal analysis, but each one of us has to decide whether or not to share this analysis with others. It is to think the same way, a single feeling, a single action. It is built so that we are all together to be united. It is something that comes from within. It is also built within each family, educating, helping, all together. They are reflections on reside. Residing depends on oneself. It is born from oneself. It is learning to live individually or in a group. It is about analyzing, reflecting. It is also about well-being wherever one finds oneself. What is the use of switching from one church to another? It means to be established in a place. It means to be in this group of brothers and sisters, inhabiting, standing firm. It is a constant struggle for a common purpose that we all have in the community, to fight for the same goal that we want to achieve. It's staying together. 
Reflections on Resist. Resisting is love, solidarity, sharing. To resist the problems and difficulties we have. To resist, you have to trust in God. If we believe in God, we will resist. With the strength of God, we can continue together and share spiritual things. When we hesitate over any little problem, we withdraw. It is necessary to have confidence in ourselves and in God. Resisting is being together in the good and the bad, enduring, enduring all the blows of life, the anguish. Jesus resisted for all. When obstacles come, we resist with faith from below. Our community has resisted the criticism from the Catholic hierarchy because of our commitment to remain on the side of the poor. Thank you all for sharing. May God add blessings to our collective lifting, listening, and learning. We now invite Christine James on behalf of our generosity generators to share our moment for generosity. Welcome, Christine. Thank you, Rob. Um, good morning, everyone. For Lent 2022, your generosity generators are offering moments for generosity tied to the Lenten theme of grotto, reside, and resist. Each Sunday, we're offering a moment centered on a quality of generosity that starts with one of the letters in the word grotto. This being the second Sunday in Lent, today's moment for generosity centers on the, the letter R, as in resistance, and our focus is on immigration justice. In this morning's celebration of the word, sorry, in this morning's celebration of the word, we shared thoughts on nearly the whole of Exodus 33, but we left out verses two through six, perhaps because they are very challenging. Verses two and three are particularly problematic for me. In them, God makes a promise to Moses to send God's angel to drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Peretzites, Hivites, and Jebusites in order to make room in the land of milk and honey for the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I find expulsion of some people to make room for others hard to square with my understanding of our charge as Christians to welcome the stranger and love our neighbors as ourselves. Isn't there room enough and enough of earth's bounty for all of God's children? Much of the bounty that we in the United States enjoy comes to us thanks to the hard and typically poorly paid labor of people who were born in other countries, but come here to work, sometimes willingly, but most often to escape the desperate conditions in their own countries. As we know far from our hermanamiento with Dulce Nombre de Jesus, Many of those terrible conditions result either directly or indirectly from actions by wealthier nations like ours. So it seems only right that we make room for those who escape. Sadly, our miserly and racist immigration practices mean a large percentage of such immigrants come here outside legal channels. Ironically, our own economy, especially the bountiful sources of milk and honey, that is our farm and food sectors, would likely cease without the labor of immigrants caught in this vicious, vicious cycle. But we should not just make room for our immigrant neighbors, we should make it as possible for them to thrive here as their contributions to our culture, communities, and yes, even our tax base, make it possible for us to live as comfortably as we do. Instead, we make it as hard as we can for those fleeing poverty, discrimination, or violence in their home countries to find safety, health, peace or prosperity here. As simple as it sounds, one crucial step toward providing undocumented immigrants with the safety and well-being they deserve is to give them the right to a driver's license. Advocates for all explain that providing immigrants without papers the right to drive legally makes a safer environment for everyone since it ensures that all drivers know the rules of the road and are insured in case of accident. Immigrants' rights groups add that having the right to drive legally 
reduces the incidence of police using racist profiling practices to stop those they suspect of driving without a license and then reporting them to federal immigration authorities. Currently, 16 states allow undocumented immigrants access to driver's licenses. Happily, earlier this legislative session, the Massachusetts House passed a bill that would allow the approximately 250,000 undocumented immigrants in the state to access driver's licenses. The bill, which has the backing of Attorney General Maura Healey and of the Massachusetts Major Cities Chief of Police Association, is now awaiting Senate approval. So this second Sunday in Lent, your generosity generators ask all Massachusetts residents in our congregation to donate some of your time in the coming week to advocating with your Senator to pass S-2289, the so-called Work and Family Mobility Act. You could also call on Senate President Karen Spilka to urge her to bring up the bill for a vote. For those who live outside of Massachusetts, we ask that you find out if your state already allows undocumented immigrants access to driver's licenses. Where Guy and I live here in Vermont, that's finally true, thanks to the tireless advocacy of groups like Migrant Justice. If your state does not allow that yet, consider joining groups where you live that are advocating for this common sense change in our law. National groups such as Cosecha can help you get started. Since we reside in the bounty of God's generosity here in our own land of milk and honey, let's resist the urge to hoard God's bounty for ourselves and share it with so many of our siblings whose labors make our lives so much easier. Thank you. And I'll put some, uh, for the people online, I'm gonna put some information in the chat about how to uh, look out for whether your state already has driver's licenses for folks. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. And as Christine calls for us to offer our time and our attention, um, we also have our moment of offering for this church as, and its ongoing work. So please give generously. Um, you can do it online. Um, the link is online. And uh, <clears throat> you can also do it in person, or you can send it uh, through, our, through our website. Thank you.
God of all creation, we give you thanks for all that we have and all that we are in community and in you. Take and bless these gifts, given as they may bring more peace, more justice, more clefts in the rock for all of creation, in your world and in your name, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, in addition to beautiful solidarity that spans miles and stories, part of our tradition as a community of faith is to share with one another some of the things that we bring with us each week in the form of prayers, in the form of longings, hopes, fears, however we want to call it. We name these as celebrations and concerns with one another before God in community. One way we do that is we share by raising our hand and, and we'll pass a mic and you can share a prayer of celebration or concern and we will pray with you. The response, the invitation is God in your grace and the response is receive our prayer and we'll do so in person and we'll do so online uh, by raising your hand or placing it into the chat and we will read it aloud. So friends, Tim will help here and pass the mic. If there are any prayers you want to pray now and share with the community, just raise your hand and we can do so together. Um, I ask your prayers for, um, for my family and friends in the southern states. Uh, this system that has uh, brought us a blast of snow has also brought them uh, hail and ice and uh, ridiculously cold temperatures for this time of year. And unlike us, they are not equipped to handle it. So I just pray that their infrastructure and things stay okay um, and that these, because it seems these once in a lifetime climate things are becoming a lot more frequent. <laughs> With Catherine, we pray, God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Right here, Tim, right behind you. <laughs> well, of course, prayers for our brothers and sisters in Dulce Nome de Jesu and for the people in Turcultores, and prayers for uh, Chepe, the partner of Yadira Betancourt. Yadira has come here a couple of times. He's very ill with cancer and for Don Alquileo, a very old man who's failing, and um, we ask for prayers for him. Thank you. With Debbie, we pray for these sacred names and these sacred communities that intersect and make us all more full and complete. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Wonderful seeing Memo on the screen today, and Amanda and their kids, we pray for them. So I heard um, that Caitlin Vest and Austin Burns had their yes. baby boy Julian on Monday, eight pounds, and so I think we should all celebrate that. Yes, with Barbara we celebrate Caitlin and Austin and Julian who has newly come into this world. May God's blessing be upon that we and precious head and those parents as they come home and get reacquainted with uh, living with three, four with a dog, and a cat, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. We pray for all of this beloved, newly ex uh, uh, expanded family. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Thank you, Barbara. Nancy over here. <laughs> the acrobats. I've had two and a half months work and joy by working in a greenhouse on the farm across the road from where I live in New York State, when I'm in New York State, and things grow, and they grow and grow, and we learn from them how beautiful they are, how nutritious they can be, and just the pleasure of seeing a little something that might be a seed, but more likely it's a little plant like this. And that plant is going to grow. And I know, I, I know that God has given me that opportunity this late in my life that I've had the joy of helping things grow. Thank you, God. For Nancy's return from New York to be with us for this promise of seeds.
growing. We give you thanks. God, in your grace, receive our prayer. Are there prayers online that people want to share? Diane, we invite you to call on folks or lift from the chat what you see. Thank you, Diane. Raise your hand if you want to speak any celebration or concern, and I will read in the meantime what is in the chat. Birthdays this week include Sarah Perot on the 16th. We give thanks for her and for all others whose lives have their anniversary this week. God in your grace. Linda Persley asks prayers for Alex, husband of Katie, who is a former doctor doctoral student of Linda's and father of Laszlo, who is receiving treatment for cancer and was recently hospitalized due to a reaction to treatment. So we pray for the health for Alex, all those in his family and caring for him and others going through such treatment. God, in your grace. Receive our prayer. Carol R. prays gratitude for the opportunity to share in thoughtful and caring community, to explore for meaning and connection, and for rich friendships. And we give thanks for Carol's presence with us as well. God, in your grace. Receive our prayer. Nancy and Jack celebrate seeing Nancy Holloman back from New York and in the sanctuary worshiping with us. So again, for community and Nancy and Nancy's prayers, God, in your grace. See you prayer. Maki and Jane, <clears throat> excuse me, pray for those who struggle with their mental health. We pray indeed deeply for those struggling and all those around them. God, in your grace. Receive our prayer. Christine James asked for prayers of support for her friend and former colleague, Becca, who's being treated for a second bout of breast cancer. Prayers for healing for Becca, support for her husband and, shoe, and two children, and all who love Becca. God, in your grace. Receive, receive. our prayer. Abhishek wants to thank God for the community of Dulce Nimrod Jesus, and all such beautiful communities of faith that gather, sing, and worship God. Their faith inspires him and makes him realize that the God of Moses cares for all God's people everywhere. God, in your grace. Receive our prayer. Others online who wish to speak any prayers. I will ask for prayers of wisdom and love for all those who are emigrating away, especially from Dulce Nemer de Sus and those in Nicaragua and others who are immigrating into the US and for the challenging situation at the border and for those who are leaving and those trying to come, may God protect all, God in your grace. Receive our prayer. Did from us. Amen, thank you, Diane. Thank you, the gathered community. Friends, I'd invite us, as we know there are other prayers in our minds and our hearts, to just collectively lean into those prayers and close with me in a word of prayer together. We start this by naming, as we saw on the walls of the church in Dulce Nombre de Jesus there, up on that church building wall, Saint Oscar Romero, framing and watching over, but also uh, very much alive in the hearts of that community. I start this prayer, uh, before I start this prayer, I, I lift these words from F. Belt Miller, a poem, I am the land in memory of Oscar Romero as we approach his saint day on March 24th this year. I am the land, I am the grass growing, I am the trees, I am the wind, I am the voice calling, I am the poor, I am the hungry, 
The doors of the church are open, as wide as the heart of any person. In times of trouble, here is a rock, here is a hand. God knows the meaning of our prayers. I have asked our government to listen. God is not dead, and I will never die. I am the land, I am the grass growing, I am the trees, I am the wind, I am the voice calling, I am the poor, I am the hungry. Friends, in the spirit of Romero and the spirit of our friends everywhere who believe in this profound reality, I ask that you pray with me. God of the land, God of the seeds that have been planted and are indeed growing, we give you thanks for the connections that we share that indeed make us more fully the people that we are intended to be. For the names that inspire us, Don Aquilera, Mariana, Concepcion, Gloria, Mildred, Maximino, Esperanza, the Betancourts, Memo, Luis, Amanda, Eduardo, so many other names and faces of the connection in Dulce Nombre de Jesus, the connection between that church and Church of the Covenant, those two communities that indeed march toward the light of God in more completion together. We give you thanks. God, for those names that we have lifted in prayer, those people that we are concerned about in our own communities and in the wider world, we pray your presence and your healing for the Ukraine right now. God, we pray nothing short of a cleft in the rock to open and for your hand to shield and protect. We pray the same for aggressors. May the guns be turned into plowshares. May bombs begin, begin to no longer explode in our world. May you bless the peacemakers, those courageous enough to open their doors to a neighbor those in Poland, those in Ukraine, those in Russia who are helping others to speak for peace and solidarity. For all the places in our world that we forget that are outside of the headlines, God, we pray for solidarity, for peace, and for justice. And God, for awareness of your presence in the rest of this journey we call Lent, that you would help us shape the grottos that you have for us, that you would help us to look to the snowflake, to the sunshine, to the soon budding trees, to the animal companions among us, to the new faces that have emerged like Julian who inspire your image among us. We pray for attention and intention the rest of this journey. We pray all these things and the remaining things that go silently in our heart, but very much we carry with us. In the sweet name of Jesus, amen. Friends, I'd invite you now to sing our closing hymn. We are marching in the light of God in the three languages as listed in Zulu, in English, and in Espanol. Let us sing. Chamos 
en la luz de Dios. Marchamos en la luz de Dios. Marchamos en la luz de Dios. Marchamos, marchamos, oh, marchamos en la luz de Dios. Luz de Dios. Marchamos, marchamos, oh, marchamos en la luz de Please be seated. And as is our practice this Lent, we have a call to action for all of us to learn and to act. This week, our Nika companions would like us to learn and act, to read an article, all of us at Covenant, about U.S. immigration policies, and then act by sending in reactions that will be shared with our siblings in Dulce Nombre. The actions. Please read the full report in the Washington Post. The link is in our bulletin and online. Second, email Diane Lauber or Tim Groves any ideas, reactions, or experiences that you have relevant to immigration especially at the U.S. southern border, but not just the U.S. southern border. It would be wonderful to have a wide voice of covenant share with our siblings in Dulce Nombre. And a bonus action of just reiterate what we were going to ask anyway, and is in your bulletin, and then Christine James asked us in the generosity generators. Uh, please thank your legislators here in Massachusetts for their support of the Work and Family Mobility Act, the Driver's License Act. So we hope and pray that this process, all these processes of uh, call to action, uh, can lead us to follow up at Covenant. Thank you. And now we come to the end of our service. May all go from this place, this gathering, knowing that you are a unique and beloved child who God needs in the world. Go and love God, love God's people. Serve God and serves God's people. And now we can exchange that sense of love and connection from God with one another. All online can unmute and exchange peace. Peace. Peace be with you. With you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace and pain. Be with you. You're a wall. Fantastic. Mm-hmm.